Hey guys, welcome back to the Kool Aid Podcast. Welcome back to another video, guys. On to, on our Barcelona news roundup, we're gonna be talking about Frankie De Jong, and we're gonna be talking about a little bit of yesterday's game, specifically talking about Joao Felix and Joao Cancelo. Guys, before we get started on our Barcelona news, make sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms. Everything is posted down below in the description. Make sure to follow us there if you want to stay up to date. But guys, let's get straight into it and let's talk about Frankie De Jong. We all know that Frankie De Jong, he did get injured yet in yesterday's games against Celta de Vigo. He came off in that first half and you saw him limping. Uh, he didn't want to put pressure on that right foot. And it seems that he has picked up an injury. Uh, there were some reports that he was going to be missing like for the next two or three months, which it was very scary. But um, this report is now saying that the objective for Frankie De Jong is to be fit for El Clasico on October 28th. So roughly around the same time period that Pedri is going to be returning. The club will, however, not take any chance if he's not quite healed before the match. If considered necessary, local anesthetic might be used for his injured ankle to ensure his participation. The distal uh, tibia peroneal uh, syn syndesmosis injury will cause the Dutchman to miss at least six games. Now, if I was Barcelona, I would not risk um, forcing Frank and De Jong whatsoever. We have to remember that the season is long. And even if we lose El Clasico, that we still can make up so many uh, more points throughout the entire season. Because what happens if we force Frankie De Jong to play that El Clasico? We win that, but then a, a, a game or, or or a week later, he gets injured and he has a relapse and then he's gone for another two, three months. That's something that we cannot afford to happen. And especially for a player who has been so key so far this season. Because guys, if this is true, Frank and De Jong has put consistently nine and tens across the board. You could say that this has been Frank and De Jong's best start to um to a season so far. Frank and De Jong has been absolutely imperious in that midfield, and him missing is such a huge blow for the club. And so talking about uh the blow that Frank and De Jong is gonna leave and the hole in the midfield, uh, how is Barcelona going to, going to be able to cope? Uh, without Frankie De Jong. This is a report coming from Sport. Without the injured Frankie De Jong, the midfield box will be formed by Joao Felix, Gundogan, or Romeo, and Gavi. So it seems like Gavi is going to be the one to replace Frankie De Jong in that, in that deep uh, holding midfield role. And guys, I, I mentioned this uh, in yesterday's match reaction. Gavi, what an absolute phenomenal player. He was literally everywhere yesterday. And he not only does he provide so much energy and so much effort into that midfield, he is so technical and he is so talented. You can just see from that assist that he gave uh, Joao Cancelo for the winning goal. He offers so much to the game. And you could honestly say that at the moment, he is up there to being one of the most important midfield players uh, in the team. Because at the start of the season, you say, hey, you have Frankie De Jong, you have Romeo, you have Pedri, and you have Gundogan. Those are our four starting midfielders. The one who's going to be left out is Gavi. But now, that's that's not the case whatsoever. Gavi is making a, a, a name for himself into that midfield. And, and what an absolute talent that we have. Uh, so grateful to have uh, Gavi into that midfield. But guys, I don't know your guys' opinions on Frankie De Jong. Uh, it, it, it's unlucky that, that, that he got injured, honestly, because he's, he was having such a fantastic season so far. But would you guys maybe potentially force him to, to play that El Clasico match? Especially knowing that in about an, an hour or so, we're going to be seeing uh, the the Madrid derby, Atletico Madrid versus Real Madrid. Hopefully, hopefully Real Madrid, they do draw points and we have some leeway in which we can we can manage. But um, now, talking about uh, last night's game, and specifically on Joao Cancelo, we all know that Joao Cancelo had a phenomenal game. Well, he didn't have a phenomenal game. He had good moments. He, like I, he, As Joao Cancelo did say, he did not have a great game. He, had, he, he, he was having a poor game. But in those key moments, he showed his quality. He gave the assist for the second, the second goal in which Robert Lewandowski put the ball away. And he scored the winning goal. Well, this is what happens when you have world-class players or, or, or talented players in your team that can make the difference. 
Search is closed on Joel Cancelo saying that Manchester City will permanently sell him if Barcelona pay 25 million. And this is reported by Fernando Polo, uh, a, a Spanish journalist for El Mundo Deportivo. But I will say, if this if this report is to be taken uh, into account and it's true, I think this is fantastic news because Barcelona, we haven't replaced Dani Alves since Dani Alves. Uh, he left in 2015. And we've had a hole in that right in that right hand side for so so many years. And with Gerard Cancelo uh, coming back into the uh, coming into the team, he's just offering so much, so much going forward. I know at times he was a defensive li liability uh, yesterday, specifically for so uh, Sotos Vigo's first goal. Like that was his position; he should have been there to to, to support Conde. But once again, that that's the trade off that that you have when when you have such an offensive fullback. Uh, and just quickly talking about Frankie Dion as well. Joao Cancelo can potentially play uh, in that pivot role because we do know that Joao Cancelo, even though he's right back, he likes to to, to basically invert in, into the midfield and play as uh, as, as another midfielder. And this is what Xavi has basically said. So, twenty five million for Joao Cancelo. I think that's a fantastic bargain. And talking about Frankie Dion, he is another potential option in which we can potentially play into that midfield to replace. Frankie De Jong. But now talking about Joao Felix, this is something completely different. Uh, this is Enrique uh, Cerroso, Atletico's pre president. Uh, Vinicius, uh, this was an error from the president. He, he was referring to Joao Felix. He's a fantastic player and he's proven it at Barcelona. He didn't adapt to us. He wasn't ready. But remember that he's an Atletico player. Now, the price tag that Atletico Madrid are setting on Joao Felix is 80 million euros. 80 million now i'm a like i'm i'm still a little bit skeptical with Joel felix because i've said time and time again we the three games that he has performed and he's done well it we i still have to see a lot more of him to be able to say hey he's not gonna flop with the club because we have to understand three good games is not an entire season we have to see how Joel felix does over the, the course of the entire season before we judge how well he did and whether he flopped or not but props to him. You, you you congratulate a player when he's doing well, and you uh, cri you constructively you give him constructive criticism when he's doing poorly. Uh, Joao Felix uh, has started brilliantly so far at the club, and hopefully uh, this can continue. But it doesn't seem like he's going to be continuing uh, after this after the end of the season because eighty million euros. I'm sorry, uh, I'm, that's not a price tag that Barcelona can afford. It, it's it's that simple. Uh, we do not have that amount of money. And even if we had that money, I don't think that Barcelona would be willing to spend that money on Joao Felix. More, a more realistic price tag would be roughly around like 40 million euros with potential add-ons. But I would be looking to lower that to 30 with uh, potential add-ons of like 15, having uh, add-ons based on if he wins the Ballon d'Oro or if he scores... A certain amount of goals or he wins the champions league for example which if that does be if we do have to pay those add-ons that does mean that the club has been successful in their targets and so i am not in favor of barcelona playing paying 80 million euros for joao felix but i want to know your guys thoughts on joao felix how much money would you guys pay for joao felix and how much money would you guys pay uh joao Cancelo? do you think that 25 million euro for joao Cancelo is a fair price or do you guys think that's a little bit too much money i personally think that's a fair price just it's a completely different story when we're talking about joao felix now, when we're talking about uh, Frankie De Jong, as, as I said, it's a shame that he did get injured. And hopefully he does have a speedy recovery. Just we need, as the, the tweet said, we need to take zero risks with him as he's going to be an important player for our, our team. But guys, that was it for our Barcelona News Roundup. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And as always, guys, remember, like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know your thoughts on everything that we have discussed. And as always, I'll catch you guys all in the next video.